Are we live? <clears throat> Hello, everybody. We have bad echo. <laughs> okay, uh, we're starting up uh, our live Q&A. Uh, we're trying out uh, vocal uh, for this one. Uh, it's November 1st, uh, 2012. I think this is our third or fourth live Q&A. Um, so you guys can just submit the questions um, through the vocal interface and then either Ty, uh, Terry or I will um, will uh, put them up and, uh, and uh, we'll get rolling. Well, uh, Richard says I'm looking very Ding Chavez today, so I guess that's a compliment. Um, the guy that played him in the movie looked pretty cool. So, all right, let's get this going. I'll uh, pull in some questions uh, from that have been preloaded from the forums while you guys start submitting your questions and we can uh, pull them up. So, let's see here. Maybe. I'll just start talking uh, while that works, um, because it doesn't look like I can submit my own questions. <laughs> um, okay, so first question from the forums before we load it up is, what weapons have been confirmed to be in the game? Uh, right now we have uh, our five base weapons, uh, or six uh, base weapons that are confirmed. Um, actually, we have uh, the 92 pistol, um, 9 millimeter, and the uh, MP5, uh, uh, with the integral suppressor, uh, G36C556, uh, um, and then we have a uh, 308 uh, semi-auto AR-based platform, uh, as well as a uh, 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 M4-style um, uh, 556 uh, AR. Um, and we're going to be looking at different uh, ammo platform variants for the for the AR. Uh, whether it be like the 6.8 SBC or the uh, 6.5 Grendel. Um, so that's what we have confirmed so far. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, now we're getting questions in. I can uh, I can put them up on top there. Uh, ammunition types will there be in the game? Um, I assume you mean what uh, type of uh, ammunition types like? Um, full metal jacket, jacketed hollow point, jacketed soft point, uh, AP, uh, that type. Um, that gives you a good rundown uh, right off the bat. Um, so the current list is the um, full metal jacket, um, jacketed hollow point, jacketed soft point, and um, uh, and armor piercing. Now those are going to have different effects on wounding and of course interact with body armor differently. Um, jacketed hollow points will be more effective against unarmored targets, uh, but will be less or uh, in some cases ineffective against armored targets. Um, AP rounds are obviously made to penetrate armor, uh, but do uh, less uh, body cavity flesh damage um, because they don't expand. Um, so that's how we're, we're handling uh, ammunition types. Um, yeah. Okay, submit your questions, guys. I'll pull a couple other ones here. Let's see. Oh, we could ask this one a lot. Sorry, I'm just learning this interface. Uh, what methods will be implemented to... Oh, Jarley McCarthy, you got to submit your questions so I can put them up on the screen, not just chat. Okay, uh, back to the, the current question. <laughs> what methods will be implemented to encourage team play, discourage lone wolf play? Um, the core gameplay really encourages team play. Um, we're not planning to do try to do a bunch of artificial things uh, that you've seen in recent games. Um, we've been, we've found in playtesting um, that we've done so far is just the core gameplay of nonlinear levels, um, along with very lethal combat and uh, realistic movement, um, encourages team play. Um, 
because you can't cover all angles at once. And when a, when a level, level is nonlinear and built to be a realistic space rather than a quote unquote balanced MP map uh, with predictable choke points and, um, and those kinds of things, then you end up uh, needing to cover your back and you can get you know, shot down very quickly uh, if you're not if you're not working together. Uh, we saw in both in co-op and multiplayer playtesting this week um, that was the biggest thing we found was that um, the team that split up, even two on two, the team that split up, um, they got they got mowed down uh, very quickly. Um, and uh, even in two and one manhunt games, um, the team that split up, and it's especially uh, uh, true in co-op. Uh, right now. Um, Biolab is a very nonlinear space. Um, m almost every s situation and space that you're in in that in that level, um, there's multiple entrances, multiple ways to be flanked, um, either from above, behind, to the sides. Um, and so it's a space that is, is very difficult to kind of clear on your own. So that's the answer to that one. Okay, Richard. How far away will a frag have to be dropped to, um, oh, hold on one sec. Uh, how far away will a frag have to be dropped to be fatal? Um, based on realistic kill zone, I believe the kill zone for a, a frag is, is, I want to say 10 meters. Um, so it's a pretty big, um, it's a pretty big kill zone. Um, that's why non-lethal uh, options are going to be really important in situations where you don't want to kill everybody in the room. Um, and uh, frags are, are relatively fatal in a relatively large uh, area. Um, Osmi, what's your opinion for the role of marksman snipers in the game, particularly in PvP? Um, it's going to depend on the space. Um, uh, and, you know, marksmen, uh, DMR, snipers, whatever you want to call them, uh, you know, the, the weapon balance is already there. And when I say weapon balance, I mean the, the realistic weapon implementation uh, that we've already got in. Um, I mentioned on the forums, you know, we were playtesting the new white box map uh, this week and we were doing a two-on-one match where I took the, the 308 uh, with the scope and uh, Terry and... Terry and Mark were using MP5s, and there's a there's a large open uh, central core space that if you're a Kickstarter or supporter, you've already seen the uh, this the screenshot of the white box, and we'll probably put it up for everybody else uh, in the next dev up, uh, dev update, uh, hopefully tomorrow. Um, but I was pretty effective as as a as a sniper in that space. The problem was is is as soon as I tried to leave that space. Um, uh, they just murdered me with the uh, with the MP5s because um, with the uh, accuracy while moving and the recoil, especially while moving and standing, um, you know the 308 was just extremely hard to handle. Um, and uh, a couple times they caught me uh, trying to switch to my pistol at inopportune times uh, when I was moving into the some of the the. Uh, close quarters, more close quarters space in that map, uh, which we'll, we'll we'll throw out more details on that space um, uh, as as we get a little bit farther along in the white boxing process. Uh, Eduardo <coughs> decided already on the number of teams and their sizes. Um, again, everybody, if you want me to see your questions, you need to submit them, uh, not. Just post them in the chat because I can only follow one thread at a time. Um, hold on, I'm trying to tell Terry we're 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 learning vocals, so cut us some slack. Um, decided already on the number of teams and their sizes. Uh, we're planning on uh, two teams uh, for multiplayer. Uh, that is the, the plan. Uh, if you mean single player, um, the base number it, that we're planning on is two, uh, two elements. Um, again, we're planning on, uh, for single player, we're thinking between six and eight um, uh, team members. And for um, multiplayer, we're looking at um, uh, 12, 12 player multiplayer right now, between 12 and 16, but I'm really thinking 16 is going to be <clears throat> too many people in the amount of spaces that we're talking about. It's not really a technical implementation, it's just a gameplay implementation. Um, 
and people are tweeting me about the vocal. People are having trouble getting in. Um, and so that's 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 the basic uh, kind of team sizes that we're looking at. Click that one off. Uh, Jarl, uh, I want to ask if the game will be team up on single player, like two player team or more. Uh, I'm assuming you mean co-op. Um, is that's what we call co-op? Would be team-based single player. And yes, we already have that implemented in the game. Uh, right now, uh, we've only tested it with up to four players. Um, the game supports a lot more than that. Um, the engine does, at least. <clears throat> so uh, right now, it's it's set up for six players, but we haven't tested it with with six yet. Um, so the stage we're at right now is is in uh, co-op. You can uh, boot up the mission, um, uh, play it across the network. Uh, we got that working and 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 played it in the last few weeks, and uh, you can. Uh, complete the mission. All the objectives are nonlinear. They can be completed in any order uh, or at the same time um, because the missions on the, the objectives on Biolab are to disarm. If you've seen the briefing video, hopefully you have, um, there's three different bombs that you have to disarm, two of which you know where they are and one of which is in a randomized location within the space. And then you need to uh, hack the mainframe uh, to secure the data. And uh, you can uh, hit that in two different locations. Um, you can insert uh, either on the roof or in the garage. And then you can, uh, you, after you complete all the other objectives, uh, the surviving team members, which so far in our playtest there have not been, uh, we, we haven't had a uh, no death run through. Uh, in fact, I think the only ones we beat is with one player left out of the four. Um, it's pretty lethal right now. Uh, so they need to get to the roof uh, to extract to complete the mission. <clears throat> uh, Richard, how many bullets generally will be required to shatter glass windows? Uh, we haven't really gotten into that yet. Um, our general, uh, my, my off the off the gut uh, response would be uh, just a couple for normal glass, and then if we do safety glass, uh, it would be um, it would be safety glass, and there would be probably be some penetration depending on the round. Uh, we, we were talking about round penetration and looking at that yesterday. Uh, we need to do, do some more research on it. The engine supports it, so we just need to figure out how exactly we're going to implement that. Um, and uh, you know, a lot of people have asked me about penetration. I'm getting a little bit beyond breaking glass, but. Uh, a lot of people have asked me about penetration in the past and, and definitely looking at expanding, I think, originally what we were looking at doing on that. Tom, maps will be open. Um, uh, give me some more detail on that question, uh, Tom, uh, and I'll, I'll answer it. Uh, but I don't know exactly what you mean. Ivan, what type of stances are available to the character? Prone, kneel, tiptoe, leg gra? Um, a lot of people have asked about this before. Um, prone is still uh, not confirmed, uh, whether we're going to have prone available. Uh, right now in our spaces, even in our larger spaces, we're, we're finding that um, it's, it's not a, an option that, that, that may be used a lot uh, or is, um, is very advantageous and you know so you guys know because we want to be transparent you know prone is not a um, it's not an easy uh, it's not an easy cheap feature from our standpoint um, there's a lot of animations to, to deal with with prone there's a lot of bugs there's a lot of problems um, to deal with things like stairs and walls um, and so it you know if 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 we had all the time and, and, and development resources in the world, Prone would, would definitely be on the list. But you know, we want to be realistic about game developers and uh, provide a quality, polished experience and uh, not just uh, you know, a ton of their different features. Um, how is Christian so awesome? <laughs> Thanks, Brandon. Um, <laughs> Uh, Terry's working from home, so he's handling the chat, it looks like. Uh, I'll just trust him to do that. Handle the chat, Terry. Um, oh, looks like Eric Epic tweeted us. Oh, okay. I guess Epic just tweeted our stream, so I guess a few more people showed up. Um, let's see. I better get talking. We only got 45 minutes left. 
Ah, this is a big one. Uh, is a R6 RS RBS style planning phase still on the table? Has the team become its implementation of its feature? Um, Eric brought this over from the forums. Um, Planning is still uh, something that we're looking at the scope of implementation of. So, you know, at the very least, we already plan and uh, plan to have implemented, you know, pre-mission um, outfitting and choosing your weapon uh, before you go in and, and uh, you know, character type, body armor, stuff like that, and then being able to choose your uh, insertion area and, and break up your team that way. So we already have that implemented in co-op. And uh, so that, that's the very least amount of planning. Now, when people mention an R6, RS, RBS style, um, that is uh, the ability to really step through an entire plan that either you or generally the AI would execute. Um, we still have to look into that. We still have to look in, into what that will take, um, both from a UI uh, and uh, an AI standpoint. Um, one of the advantages that, that Rainbow Six had was that their uh, their scripting engine, how they scripted AI was essentially, what they did was essentially open up the scripting tool through the planning phase. Um, like when I modded Rogue Spear, the, the, the scripting uh, uh, UI and engine was, was very similar to the, the planning UI. Um, uh, and um, Unreal doesn't necessarily work like that. Obviously, uh, Ravenshield supported it, so in Unreal 2, so it's not that much of a going to be that much of a technical issue from an implementation standpoint, besides the UI abilities and capabilities. But it really is a scope issue for us. Um, while planning uh, was is often mentioned as very popular from a uh, hey that's a cool feature and I really liked it. If you look on the stats, if you actually could when you looked at the stats of, of usage um, by players, um, it was relatively low. Um, a lot of people when they used uh, planning, they would uh, either uh, use the default plan, uh, or a lot of times what they would use it for is when they got in a situation where they, you know, bang their head against the mission five or six times uh, with no plan, and then they'd revert back and use the plan to kind of walk through the mission. So, uh, really, it's a scope and a, a usage issue. Uh, we want to make sure that any features that we build, you know, we're an indie team, and we want to provide, again, uh, a quality-focused experience. So, it comes down to implementation. You're going to hear me say that a lot, um, and it's because we want to be transparent and honest. You know, I'm not here to, you know, promise you guys things that, uh, that we won't be able to deliver in a quality manner. And so, when we get to farther down the line and we get it more uh, iterated, uh, iteration and, and uh, where we're at, uh, feel free to bring it up again and I'll, I'll answer uh, at that time. Uh, let's see, how much time will it take for beating a level in SP and co-op? Uh, that's, that's, um, that's always an interesting question when you look at, at these realistic nonlinear games um, because if you go back, excuse me, uh, if you go back on YouTube and look at some of the videos, um, you can Google like Rogue Spear Speed, and uh, I was just watching the other one, one the other day on um, I think it was Side Base One from Rogue Spear, and the guy beat it in a minute and 12 seconds. Um, and even Nuke Plant, which was the largest map I believe ever made, uh, um, took the guy 16 minutes. Um, from start to finish. Now those are speed runs. Obviously, th the thing is, is once you learn the map really well and you get a general idea of the layout, um, we'll be a little bit more, I believe, randomized on a lot of the placements than uh, than Rogue was. And so we, we'll have our, you know, kind of base place dudes um, that will have uh, different set locations and then more randomized. So you won't be able to do as much kind of that type uh, speed run through as you, as you would be able to. But as far as a general playthrough, on a first playthrough, we're seeing, a, um, I think it was like when James first started playing through, it was about 23 to 26 minutes. Um, lethality, lethality increases uh, gameplay time um, because, you know, the more lethal it is, uh, the slower and more careful you need to move. Um, when we implement features like Lean, uh, which we have in a, in a rough state right now, that increases play time because it gives you an option to, you know, move up to a corner and peek around um, uh, rather than, uh, you know, kind of running into a room. So play time, it's, it's, it's going to be variable. Um, we're looking at our missions between um, kind of first run through, if you play careful, uh, 
um, between 20 and 30 minutes. And as, as you get better and better and better, uh, you're going to get faster and faster and faster. Um, but there'll be a certain, you know, cap. Um, but again, you know, if you can beat a Rogue Spear mission in a minute and 30 seconds, you're pretty, pretty good at it. Um, with Sandbox game, I think Tom means that you can go into the fight in different approaches to the target. I, I assume what you mean is is how uh, open will the levels be around the engagement area? It's going to depend on the space. Um, you know, certain you know certain spaces like Biolab uh, have limited have you know, two insertions uh, currently, one on the roof and one in the garage. And so you can come at it uh, from the above. Now, of course, once you get into the space, it's nonlinear. So once you come into the garage, if you want to go through the generator room or up to the stairs and through the lobby and then the first level and up the the um, the elevator if you really want to, although that ding uh, tends to give away where you are, uh, it's it's kind of up to you, and then there'll there'll be other spaces that are going to be more open or um, than that with with more insertion zones uh, and different approaches, and then there'll be you know um, if you think of uh, Embassy from Rogue, you know there was kind of one insertion zone, but there was multiple entries into the building, uh, and so we plan on spaces like that as well, where um, you may only have one or two insertion areas, but 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 if there's multiple insertions into the building, um, you know, I, I use my Costco map as an example. Um, you know, if you think about a Costco building, how many entrances there are, um, those would be available to you as well. <sighs> Let's see. Um, for PC movement, will it be on-off movement speed, or can it be anagulous? Not I never figured out how to promote, pronounce that word. I apologize. Uh, but I get what you mean. Is there going to be, I assume what you mean is there going to be acceleration um, or um, things like that. So currently on PC we have a walk with a run modifier. Uh, there is acceleration on the character so it takes you a little bit to get up to speed. Um, and that's just through smoothing. Um, it's not going to be as crazy as, as um, at least as it feels like in, in DayZ where it feels kind of like it takes me a good good amount of time to get up to run speed. Uh, we still want it to be snappy and responsive. And on the console, we don't plan to do a run button. We would plan to do um, uh, you know stick, uh, half stick walk up to run. Um, so we'll take down have what it takes to appeal to the players who are used to the COD BF style of play from Jonathan Fieldings. Uh, don't really know. Uh, if if they're used to the COD BF style of play and they like it and that's what they want, then no, Takedown will not have what it appeals to them. Um, if they're used to the COD BF style of play and they want something different uh, than that, then uh, ideally, yes, Takedown would appeal to them. Um, even at our early stage of implementation, you need to play Takedown much differently than you would play um, Call of Duty. Um, you know, for one thing, you need to think about which direction you're going. There's more than one direction uh, in a single-player and co-op experience. Uh, it doesn't, you don't just go that way. Um, and you need to think about what's behind you and, um, you know, the different routes into the location. Um, and uh, obviously one of the nice things uh, that, at least for me, is there's no enemy respawning or anything like that. So if you shoot a dude uh, and you clear a room and you keep that covered, you're going to know that there's not going to be another guy coming from that direction if you, if you secure it. Um, but it is, it is a different play style. And, and you know, some people uh, of the younger generation um, might not be as used to that. Um, it's interesting, actually, because we pulled our YouTube view stats. And, um, you know, the standard line in video game development when you're a AAA developer, all you ever get is our core demographic uh, for core games is the 17 to 34-year-old male. And it's actually interesting because our demographic, at least based on YouTube views, is the 25 uh, to 45-year-old male. Um, and I'm sure there's some females in there, but th those were the top three um, with, I believe, I want to say it was 25 to 30 and then 35 to 45 and then or something like that. I'd have to pull it up again. Um, but we do trend a little bit higher, uh, I think a little bit older uh, than the, the average video game um, uh, kind of AAA uh, mainstream game.
Excuse me. I stopped drinking coffee before these things. Osmi, would I be able to mod an AR-15? I'm going to scroll down a little bit so I can get other people in on these, so I'm not just doing the same people over and over. Would I be able to mod an AR-15 to make a Mark 12 SPR-ish weapon to use in the game? Uh, we do plan to have different optics available uh, for the game. So our current mod system for the weapons uh, accessory system is that um, you would, uh, and I forgot is if the Mark 12 is a is is a 308 or a 556. Someone can, I'm sure, answer me answer me that. Um, so you would basically the three uh, modifications for each base weapon are attachment uh, and or barrel, so uh, suppressor and or muzzle brake. Um, the optic, so whether you're taking a red dot or a trijacon or a larger scope, um, and then the the, the magazine, uh, whether you're taking a standard or, or extended magazine. Um, each one of those, those aren't exclusive like they were in Raven Shield, where you had to pick between, like I can have a suppressor or I can have a scope, um, but they all affect the weapons handling. Now, of course, if you know, if we build something like the air platform and we already have a 308 AR platform, uh, you'd be able to mod that uh, to, you know, choose your optic. Now, what you're not going to be doing, I can tell you right now, is you're not going to be, um, I'm trying not to sound sarcastic, you know, using Connect to wave your arms and say like, oh, I like I like that, the Magpul PR7 stock, or, or I like the uh, da, da 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 stock that looks like this. Um, because honestly, you know, we're going to put our resources into where it affects gameplay and um, uh, not spend a lot of time in, in a lot of visual eye candy that, while cool, doesn't have a big benefit on the game. All right, let's pull up another one. Ah, when will Steam be put up on Greenlight? That's a very good point, uh, or a very good question. Sorry, Sean. Uh, when will Takedown... T Takedown will be put on Greenlight at some point. Um, we kind of waited. Greenlight kind of got off to a rough start, and it was a little messy there, and it was a little confusing because of where we're at. Um, even with the new system, like there's the concept one, and then there's the regular green light. You know, obviously the hundred dollars is not a big deal. Um, that's not a defining factor. Now that we have the briefing video um, and the level fly through, and we'd be able to create more uh, gameplay uh, style footage. Um, but I need to do some more research into that. Uh, uh, exactly when we're going to launch uh, the green light. Um, I'd, I'd rather I'd say sooner rather than later, um, but we'll definitely keep. You know, we have a Steam community um, uh, that you can go join if you're on Steam, and I encourage you to do that. Um, obviously, along with our, you know, Facebook and and Twitter and and forums, uh, which I assume you know about if you're here. Um, so um, yeah, get get on the Steam uh, the the Steam community, and then uh, we'll you know we'll let you know when uh, when that stuff is up and running. Terry just uh, post posted a broken link in the uh, in the chat log, so if Terry can get his shit together and post a real link, uh, you guys will be able to click on that. You're fired, Terry. <laughs> Uh, Cedric, um, what maps are you guys working on now that the Biolab is at 80%? So we've got a few uh, level concepts in the pipe. Um, Mark is white boxing. Um, the facility, what I'm calling facility, uh, the name is, is um, uh, hasn't been defined yet. Um, uh, so uh, I'm going to hold off on a defining that map. Uh, right now, because uh, I want to, I want to give uh, the Kickstarters uh, and the supporters in the, in the supporter-only forum uh, more details on that before I release it uh, publicly. But we've got multiple concepts in the pipe. Um, uh, we're trying to, still trying to figure out a way with the whole. Uh, you know, we we have an internal Pinterest account that we use to share concepts, visual concepts, and we're trying to figure out a good way to open up that system uh, to you guys to be able to post ideas and, and concepts that you like. I mean, obviously, there's giant forum threads on, on types of levels that people like, but it's really cool to see a visual montage of all these different images because it gives you a very clear idea of what you mean, uh, you know, rather than saying, um, you know, hospital. You know, hospital can mean a lot of things, um, but if there can be very unique aspects within that, that that appeal to us visually. You know, I think if you look at, at Biolab, um, you know, we are interested in, in levels that are that are 
both realistic and visually interesting. Um, you know, I've always said, you know, train yards and warehouses are out um, because I don't, you know, we've seen eight bazillion of them. And not, we're not going to, you know, be completely unique, unique in all of our spaces. You know, there's going to be spaces that, we, you know, we're, we have that other games have had or will had. Um, we're not really approaching it from that direction. We're just approaching it for what would be cool for our game. Um, one of the mistakes that me and Mark were talking about that, that commonly gets with games, especially if you um, have worked in a sequel, is you start, um, you know, hey, let's have an abandoned... Um, you know, abandoned village. Okay, cool. We have an abandoned village. Oh, uh, look. And then you're in the next game. Let's have an abandoned um, Japanese village. Okay, cool. Let's let's have an abandoned fishing village on the shore of um, Mexico. Okay, cool. Let's have a shipyard. Let's have a abandoned shipyard. Let's have a bombed out shipyard. And so you start adding all these these kind of modifiers onto it to try to be unique. And and a lot of times it just ends up looking like the same thing. I mean, I was I was watching one of the Call of Duty, I think, launch trailers or multiplayer trailers, and they had the abandoned shipyard, and it was all rusted, and I was like, wow, it looks a lot like a lot of the Ghost Recon levels I played, and, um, you know, not to bag on them, it's, there's nothing wrong with that, but um, our focus is just on what's cool and unique and not trying to be completely different by doing something completely different that ends up being completely the same, if that makes sense. That was a long, rambling answer to your question, wasn't it? Uh, yes, Ben, there will be bears somewhere. Ben, ben is asking in the chat log if there will be bears. Someone asked it on the forums if there will be a bear mask. Um, uh, yes, there will be bears somewhere, somehow, if you guys really want it. Um, someone else asked me on the forums uh, if, if I was going to put my face on a character in the game. Um, if you guys really want me to, I guess I can. I'll I, maybe I'll make myself a hostage or a bad guy or something like that. Um, it's up to you guys. Have a have a put a poll in the forum, and if you guys vote, then then I'll do it. Um, I actually was. I don't know if it ever got in, but I was. Uh, I believe a terrorist in Rainbow Six Lockdown. I didn't work on it, um, but I know at least I was in some concept art uh, as a bad guy. Um, let's see. Um, will America's Army, oh, I'm sorry, i got to post it up. Do you think Takedown will appeal to America's Army 1.2, 2.x players, Sergio? Well, if you're not a Kickstarter, you're going to have to pay for Takedown and not have your tax dollars pay for it or my tax dollars pay for it. So that's one thing um, uh, that they may not like. Um, but, um, uh, sorry, I'm getting distracted. Now they're talking about shooting me in the chat log. I don't know if the if the chat log is recorded with this, which is why I keep re referencing it. Um, so, but I I think America's Army gamers would uh, you know be uh, have an appeal to this. Obviously, it's a different take. Um, you know, uh, one of the things I, I I'm excited about our game is is variable ROE. Um, you know, the rules of engagement for different. Uh, single player and co-op missions being different um, and so you know the requirements you know in some situations to use full metal jacket where you're you're required for that mission to use FMJs because it's a you know Geneva back Geneva convention back mission or you know how how you can engage hostiles whether you be lethal non-lethal things like that um, uh, I think will be a new experience for America's Army, but you know, obviously, a lot of the the ethos for for A is um, some of the same things that motivate us. Although their approach and uh, kind of scope is is a little bit different. So as long as they get over the whole, you have to pay money, and and I'm not paying for you to play it, then uh, then they should be good. I probably went a little overboard on that. <clears throat> Ah, uh, great question from Tom. Can you open all the doors and go inside all the buildings? No. There will be some, probably, doors in the spaces that you cannot go into. Um, we're, we're planning a UI system uh, to handle that, and you can tell me it's, it's as unrealistic as you want, and I know it's unrealistic, um, but there are going to be, to build a realistic space uh, that works for gameplay, there are going to be some situations where there'll, there'll be doors that you can't go into. Um, uh, part of that's going to be development, um, you know, there's bathrooms in Biolab that you can't go into right now. Um, if we have time, we'll build out the bath labs. They do 
bathrooms they do absolutely nothing for gameplay um, they're a dead end uh, that doesn't go anywhere um, and uh, but we do plan a UI system uh, to tell you that uh, as well as and again here I'm just being honest with, with you guys I could I could have some bullshit marketing answer where I'm like well the the dynamic interaction in the game is really important to us but um, you know doors are always a pain in the ass uh, to deal with because it's it's very difficult to build a realistic environment um, where you know, every door is go um, and and then have it, all the space built, and then have it cool. You know, we work in a temporary office building. There's probably th if I walk out that door and go around, there's a bunch of small offices like this. Probably 30 doors down there. Um, and uh, so we'll have a system in place we'll, where what we plan is there'll be multiple ways of interacting with doors. So whether the door is locked, um, whether you can pick it or breach it or shotgun it or, um, like I mentioned before, once you, uh, if it's unlocked, you can, um, uh, you know, uh, says very carefully crack and frag uh, where you have a canned, uh, you know, pull the door, uh, toss a frag to the crack. Um, and so, uh, yeah, um, that's that's how. Oh, and then uh, you know there would be a UI indicator if the if the door uh, uh, was was unbreachable, uh, and, and we're going to try to make that as realistic as possible. You know, if it's it's if it's unbreachable, we we hope to have a, a visual representation uh, of that. Yes, Eduardo, crack and frag the door. I need to come up with a new term so I can not make that mistake again. Uh, what's the biggest headache you're having in development so far uh, from Caleb? Um, that's a great question. Um, um, you know, I mean, part of it is a small team. You, you run into issues that you, you wouldn't run into when you have a, a massive team. There, there can be small bugs and problems that um, you would normally, you know, if you have a 100-person team and a, and a giant million-dollar budget, you don't let little easy fix things sit around because it's 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 you you don't care as much about time and money and and resources and so you just have someone go ahead and fix that um, uh, so there are things that we you know have to go go without because of our, our the resources available to us where we we have to look down the future and say well when it's time to implement that we'll implement it but um, uh, you know, we'll deal with it as as is right now. Uh, so a lot of times when we're prototyping things, because we're we're focused on really fast iteration, getting the game and the features up and running and play testable as fast as possible. Sometimes you'll either have breaking bugs that you deal with for a while, or visual things that go along with that. Um, but because we're indie and we're small and and um, and we're all better in game developers, we can also look past those things. A good example of that is Lean right now. So Lean right now. Um, Actually, it just moves the camera, so the character doesn't animate to match the lean, as it's implemented currently. Now, of course, you know we plan to fix that. Um, actually, very shortly, um, our initial fix will be kind of an ugly, um, you know, force animate the character um, at a at a, a bone joint, which will look bad, but it'll function. Um, the reason we're going to do the, the the hacky fix up front is because if your camera just moves and your your character doesn't lean, well, when you lean, you can see around a corner, and your character doesn't isn't poking his head around the corner uh, so it's a it's a it's a, a cheap bug um, uh, both for the AI and the and the and the players uh, which I totally killed James using the other day and then I get decided I guess we should fix that uh, so you know ideally in, in a in a game development experience you'd you'd you know bring your animator in and have him do all the animations and put it in um, and uh, so that's probably the biggest I'd say headache um, we haven't a lot had a lot of, of development problems we had some some challenges with networking on the um, the networking side, which actually turned out to be uh, versioning problems, where um, we were we were getting data off the server. Um, I'm probably going way in depth for some of you guys, too in depth. Um, basically, we weren't using our software right, and our, our engineer uh, slapped us outside the head and uh, you know fixed that. Um, you know, we have some people offsite that can be a challenge, um, but but. The, the people that are contributing to this project are so motivated and um, you know they put in a lot of extra time I've said this a lot of times in a lot of different talks and interviews um, that uh, their motivation motivates me and I'm, and we're willing to work through those, those challenges no, 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 no. has the money system you talked about been scrapped um, from Eduardo uh, not yet 
uh, hasn't been scrapped or moved forward on. Um, it's something that we're going to be thinking on down the line about how that's going to work. Um, we still have a lot of ideas about how, how it may or may not work, and, and it's just it's just something that we're going to uh, conquer down the line. Um, you know, one of the things that, that a lot of folks aren't used to with the way that we're, we're expressing this is that we're, you know, throwing out ideas to you guys on, um, you know, things that we're thinking about uh, and things that we're exploring. And some of those are going to come to fruition and some of those aren't. You know, in traditional game development, um, you know, marketing will not let you talk about a feature until it's 100%. Um, because then, you know, at some person that came on the forums, you know, months ago and said, oh, there's going to be a money system. That's awesome. And then they come back in six months. And if it's not there, then they, they might complain about it. Uh, luckily, we're in a situation to say, "Cool, sorry," um, but marketing uh, in a AAA environment really doesn't like that. Uh, so that's why you get more of these pre-canned things, and why uh, the development teams often aren't allowed, uh, aren't able to respond to the community's feedback. You know, um, you know, I've seen this on Ghost Recon. I saw it on specifically a lot on Ghost Recon uh, Gra PC. Uh, with diesel and uh, you know I've seen similar uh, stuff on Rainbow Six Lockdown um, as well as um, uh, Future Soldier more recently where you know the community members were uh, you, you know they gave this feedback like hey here's the feedback we played your game and you know or we saw the feature and you know we have this feedback that how it could be better or how it shouldn't be there or how we like it or if we can have these options and a lot of times in traditional game development it's just by the time marketing approves the release or PR approves the release, it's too late. It's too late to go back and change it. You've already, you know, made your decision. Um, and sometimes marketing will try to spin that, like, oh, thanks for the feedback. We really appreciate it. And behind the scenes, the developer's going, dude, what do you, we can't fix that. Let's just be honest. We can't change that. Um, but, you know, you, you just you can't say that, Some, you know, if you want to keep your job. Um, so, uh, yeah. I go a little long on some of these questions. Sorry about that. Um, okay, Julie already or Jarl, sorry, we already answered all the doors. Question. Uh, <laughs> Will there be a key combo voice commands for those uh, without mics, like in Counter Strike tribes, etc.? Um, I'd hope so. I, that's a feature I'd like to have. Um, uh, um, you know, if we have the the voice voice commands for the AI, uh, there should be a way to have a, a combo system in there. Um, it's sometimes it gets a little a little annoying in Counter Strike, um, so we'd have to think about um, you know just like with voice, um, uh, how that's handled. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly, Ben. Fire in the hole, fire in the hole, fire in the hole. Um, I have the bomb. I don't have the bomb. Um, and I, honestly, myself, I don't know what you guys think, but when I actually tried to use the voice com uh, combos in Counter-Strike, I mean, I was playing on open servers, but nobody ever listened to me or did anything. Um, they they kind of just used it to screw around. So we'll see. Is there a plan to in, uh, implement an injury GIMP system similar to Raven Shield? Uh, there will be some type of uh, injury system. Um, uh, leg GIMPing is is somewhat controversial and something that I'm a little um, uh, open to feedback on on exactly how it'll be. You know, obviously there's some things I'm I'm not open feedback on, uh, like like uh, grenade arcs um, or displaying potential grenade arcs in the UI, to be specific. Um, hello, Dimitri. Uh, but on um, so obviously you know taking taking damage getting shot uh, is going to affect things like your accuracy um, in the uh, UI. So if you have any more questions, please submit them because, like I said, the questions um, looks like a bunch of people dropped out too. We had I thought over fifty at some point. Now it's down to forty. Ah, here they are. Okay. Um, take that one down, put that one up, put that one up. Is there any chance that Red Saber team will communicate via Army SWAT tactical hand signals from Geruto 7? Um, um, 
you know, arm hand signals are one of those things that just because I've implemented them before in, in Ghost Recon 2, um, it, it, it comes back to one of those features that's really cool that, that don't get used a lot uh, besides the, um, I crouch behind someone and use the advance um, hand signal to, to be cute. Um, <clears throat> Uh, you also run into issues with your weapon. Um, you know, hand signals are traditionally right hand, left hand, um, but in, in in games you traditionally can't really take your hand off the the, the weapon because a player is going to want to shoot at any point. Um, players generally won't put up with the even if I hit the hand signal button and I'm playing the hand signal uh, assemble and uh, or using my right hand and then it's just and then I want to shoot that it's not instantaneous. So there's issues with it. Um, they, again, it's a cool feature. It's something that we would evaluate against the, the win. <clears throat> um, uh, Terry says we should go over 10 minutes over to make up for the problem. You guys want to go 10 minutes over? If you guys all say yes, I'll give you an extra 10 minutes. I'm, I'm still downloading, re-downloading RMA so that I can play, uh, play DayZ with you guys too. So it gives me more time. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Is there going to be a transportation to insertion point or will we just spawn on location? Right now, just spawn on location. So you tra uh, spawn uh, in the insertion point. That's what insertion is. Um, driving to the insertion point, taking a helicopter to the insertion point, those are all cool things. Um, but again, guys, let's manage our expectations for how much money and time uh, that we have for this title. Um, they're all neat. Um, you know, at least for me, though, a lot of times they get really boring. Um, you know, how many times in Vegas, the Rainbow Six Vegas, did you feel excited flying around in that helicopter? Um, so that's the, the, the basic answer. Um, you know, we have little things like right now when you go to uh, when you go to extract on the roof in the bio lab, a, a helo does come in. Uh, things like that are you know spice like that that are relatively cheap. Um, uh, that, that add flavor to it. So when you come out on the, the that roof from the thing, you hear the, the noise of the helicopter, and as you come up to the helicopter and get into the ex extraction zone, um, the helicopter starts moving down, and then the, the mission cuts there. Um, so, you know, we want to spice things up, but we also aren't going to have you drive through the city streets listening to the taxi cab driver's radio like in Call of Duty for, like, 15 minutes. Let's see... How many combat roles, classes, and how do they differ? Um, one. One combat role, uh, operative, uh, in multiplayer. Uh, so we are not doing class-based uh, combat. This is not a class-based game. So there is not going to be, I am playing the engineer, and I can use submachine guns and get body armor, or I am playing the machine gunner and get big machine guns and can carry extra ar ammo, or I am the sniper, and so I can turn invisible. Um, that's fine for other games and and can be really cool. I mean, we did a, a, a somewhat we didn't really do a class-based system, but we had we had classes in Graw where you know you could choose a class that gave you um, that gave you uh, um, pluses and minuses with various weapons. Um, uh, but the feedback I've gotten on that, I was actually kind of surprised that people weren't, uh, people, the, the general feedback was, was that they, they weren't really interested in that. They just wanted the, the weapon stats, um, you know, things like the weapon you choose and the attachments that you choose and the body armor that you choose are going to affect your play experience. Um, but that's, that's, um, excuse me, that's, that's our current direction on classes. Uh, we're really not planning on it. Now, um, if we do the operative roster in single player, different AI will have different uh, um, uh, skill sets, and they will be dip better at different, different things. Um, so it won't just be a bunch of exactly the same guys, but that is very similar to Rainbow Six. Multiplayer uniforms. I personally feel Spec Ops versus Terrorists has been done to death from Richard. That's very interesting, Richard, because we were just having that question, uh, conversation within the office the other day. Um, and it's been kind of an up and uh, back and forth thing in my mind. Um, and uh, I think we've settled on, on, on force, on force uh, for multiplayer. Um, you know, actually, and in fact, we, 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 we've had, it's been force on force. Unfortunately, right now, the multiplayer models are exactly identical. Um, so we need to fix that. Um, uh, and um, uh, what was I saying? So actually, for testing purposes right now, I just implemented yesterday the, um, 
the uh, um, the um, I'm sorry uh, Tango versus versus uh, Red Saber, um, but that's just placeholder right now. Um, but the eventual plan would be uh, that you would have your multiplayer character. Um, you can choose from the different options or customize to what extent that there is, um, you know, male, female, um, you, know, you choose your body armor, things like that. And then um, the, 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 either the map or the server would have uh, different uh, camouflage options, um, probably based on the map in pairing, so you don't get those assholes that, that put their team in, in whatever black urban camo in the in the dark construction yard map and put the other team in snow camo um, uh, and um, also you you know you'd be able to choose your country and then if we do some kind of uh, PMC based clan uh, display system uh, ideally you'd be able to uh, have that on the character as well um, but uh, that is that is the uh, that is the the general idea um, you when you when we get into we, we definitely don't want to do a you know one evil terrorist force versus another evil terrorist force. Um, people want to have customization. A lot of people want to have customization, um, or at least some character selection. So that that's where we're leaning right now. But we're not planning on like in BioLab. It will be the security, you know, the fake security guard criminals against Red Saber, and in uh, you know facility, it's going to be the um, you know whatever European eco radicals against uh, Red Saber. Um, that could be maybe an option or a, a, a unlock, a not unlockable, an option or a mod thing or something like that to, to be able to bring the terror skins in. That's that's probably a good approach as well um, to make it uh, kind of a, a gameplay option that you could turn on and off. That's something we could look into. Thinking on the fly here. Will we be able to jump? Currently, yes. Um, you can't jump very high. You can't really jump onto much. Um, you can't bunny hop, um, and uh, that's but but we currently do have jump uh, implemented. Um, whether we keep jump, um, you know, I do uh, with the plan environmental uh, interaction system. We plan to have a mantle or a clamber system, um, and so whether that completely replaces jump and jump goes away uh, altogether. Um, but uh, right now, there's no purpose in jumping. Uh, because it uh, it just makes you not be able to hit anything uh, in our current spaces. Um, because uh, I personally can't go from a standing jump up onto that desk. I know there's people that can. Um, I'd like to see them doing in a in a uh, level three uh, body armor attack vest carrying an M4E2. But uh, yeah, so um, let's see. Um, <laughs> jump makes me a space bar addict. Yeah, Terry. Terry just gets just gets himself killed with it. He he doesn't know that it makes him less accurate. Have base statuses been implemented in the alpha for the team members? Ready, fatigued, wounded, dead. Uh, not yet. No. Um, we still gotta get that in. Um, so we just have right now. Basically, you're alive and dead. Uh, we haven't gotten the 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 different status statuses in. But it's coming. Ivan, is there going to be night and day cycles? Uh, probably not. Um, uh, if you go look at BioLab, um, and as you see the new screenshots that are going to come out, obviously we're going to have spaces that are going to be outdoors as well as indoors. Um, but um, <clears throat> but night and day cycle uh, is not a big win again you know trying to be honest with you guys you know night and day cycles in games they're cool they're neat uh, I liked it in Fallout it seemed to have relevance in Fallout um, I'm sure it has relevance in RMA um, uh, it had definitely has relevance in DayZ um, uh, but in Biolab it wouldn't matter if it was day outside um, and you know our missions and, and engagements are relatively quick. You know a, a, a multiplayer game is, is relatively quick. We're not talking about you know kilometers of terrain that, that, that you need to, to to move across to engage the enemy. Um, you know uh, relatively small spaces, and uh, so you know the gameplay time comes from really moving through those spaces tactically, uh, and you know making sure that that, that you clear every you know inch of that space or else you're going to get shot in the back. Um, so day-night cycles, they're just not a big win. Um, 
I, I can't see even even if it's something like the switch on Unreal 3 that we just turn on, um, I, I can't see uh, putting the processor power towards it in our game. Will Red Saber members be able to get in through Windows? Uh, that would be based on how we implemented the Mantle and Clamber system. Um, and so uh, it would be based on how that it, how and if that was that was implemented. Will there be gimmicky features like heartbeat sensors and stuff? Um, I, I do have a plan to have a gimmicky option. You can turn gimmicks on or off. Um, no, I'm just being being a dick. Um, uh, so as far as heartbeat sensors, uh, the general plan is, is, as you saw in Rainbow Six of the, the magic wand that you can run around with and magically see everything around you, um, uh, not really. We are looking, I mean, there is real technology of devices that you can, um, that you can use to, to detect things on the other sides of walls. Um, you know, you can look on YouTube and see these videos. Now, they're relatively bulky. They take time. It's not something you're going to be running around with. Um, we do plan on things uh, like um, uh, um, what we're calling gadgets would, would include things like breaching charges, also include things like, you know, frag grenades, um, uh, flashbangs, uh, possibly concussion grenades, uh, you know, physical stinger grenades, um, uh, things like that, but, but including uh, things like breaching charges uh, for doors. Um, and included in those, you know, I, I do want to explore things like noise generators, um, where you could, you know, place a, a noise generator in a space, um, uh, to generate noise um, in, in multiplayer. I think those things would be fun to play with. Um, but, uh, but no. It, it's funny, Dimitri's making fun of someone about heartbeat sensors, calling them Call of Duty people's. No, that was Rainbow Six. Um, in fact, there were whole levels where the entire level was heartbeat sensed, and you could you could see everybody. Um, and, and so we're not we're not planning on on specifically that. Um, I personally, I mean, the nice thing about the Rainbow Six heartbeat sensor is that you had to stow your weapon, and so it did encourage in co-op. It encouraged a little bit of teammate uh, uh, um, teamwork. Um, but uh, oh, sorry, Dimitri, he was talking about the heartbeat sensor attachment for Call of Duty. I apologize. I, I haven't obviously played enough Call of Duty. Um, so that's that's where we're out on that. Okay, we got about uh, nine minutes. I'll take it to about 4.15 if you guys want, and then I really got to um, get off and uh, I uh, got to do some more mission scripting. Um, will there be some lights that we can destroy? That's something we're exploring uh, with the dynamic lights, um, ones that you can shoot out and, and how that affects the game, so we're still exploring that. Can you hold your breath before you shoot your weapon? That's a that's a great question. A lot of games have implemented features like that, uh, specifically with sniper rifles with the hold your breath thing. Um, I'm kind of mixed on it. Um, you know, yes, when you when you're firing a, a sniper rifle at extreme range, or when you're trying to be as accurate as possible with a rifle, um, I personally don't do it with a pistol. Um, but you know, you want to fire um, and in at least how I was trained, is what's caused the natural respiratory pause. So, you know, you breathe in, fire. Breathe in, you fire. Um, you actually don't just hold your breath. Now, some people argue with that. Some people say, like, well, you're supposed to breathe, hold your breath at middle breath. But um, the reason, at least the core taught me, natural respiratory pause was that's a natural pause. And so you're not, your body's not straining to hold, hold your breath. Um, uh, and yes, I am talking about the core and wearing an army shirt. Uh, I served in multiple services. Um, so um, whether it's it's probably not a big feature to implement. Um, how much effect it's going to have on gameplay? Um, so it's it's probably a pretty easy feature to implement. Um, the effect on gameplay in an urban sniper situation, um, unless you have a superior, really um, precision shot that you need to make, like in a hostage to make like in a hostage type situation or a heavily armored target that you need to make a, like a precise neck shot if someone's got a you know dead man's trip or something like that um, we'll have to see we'll have to see on that one it's a good question um, 
it's overdone in most games that do it. The effect of holding your breath is very much overdone in, in a lot of games that do it um, because they implemented a feature and they want to um, uh, have it feel important. Um, so, um, Some even say to swallow after you exhale. <clears throat> I don't know. I, I've never heard that one before, uh, Osmi, about swallowing uh, inaccuracy. Um, but I am I am no sniper, so I just like guns and just expert. Is there going to be physical attacks, like punch and quick? It's something that, again, we were talking about in the office the other day, um, was... Um, uh, was kind of a, a melee. Uh, it is something we're going to explore. It wouldn't be uh, like a knife attack. It would be more along the lines of a, you know, possibly a butt stroke to the rear, uh, uh, something like that. We're going to explore it and see how it affects gameplay. You know, we don't want this to turn into the, you know, the the magic tripod of uh, or the golden tripod, as as Jamie Gressmer put it of of Halo of um, you know, gun grenade melee, um, which is how that game's designed. You 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 gun someone, you grenade them, and you melee them, and that's the gameplay loop. Uh, that's not our gameplay loop. Um, uh, but there is something appealing about you know getting up beside behind someone uh, silently and and these guys ending off melee. Um, yeah, so I was finishing talking about melee. I don't know what's going on going on vocal you guys should tweet them um they're responding because a couple people couldn't log on to twitter free hell's going on but you guys tweet them and tell them if they want us to use them again they need to know how to stop this from happening because it freezes up on me and, and it still says live and i can see myself and everything's working and then uh i notice that no no movement's happening and, and tells me and tells tells me i'm offline um we just like this because of the cool like little like, submit questions and stuff so it looks like i did not lose the questions this time so um I talked about melee. We are looking in uh, at a kind of a butt stroke melee behind silent type thing, um, and we'll be looking into that uh, whether it's worth it. We don't want it into a halo melee or knife kill type situation. All right. Um, please confirm that we can practice our marksmanship skill in game at the in game range with drills. Um, uh, we are planning. Um, Yes, we are planning a, a, a range type environment where you'd be able to practice your mark skills. As far as the drills, I'm assuming what you mean are like a kill type, you know, maybe pop up target type situation. Um, yeah, we'd be we'd be looking into that. I mean, um, <coughs> trees. I could build a dueling tree. That's just physics, man. Um, as me asking trees, uh, and um, so yeah, uh, we'll. we'll Stuff. Um, you know, the great thing about a realistic situation is that when you want to set up your training level, the training level, and it's and it's a space that's it's cool to 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 to, to and uh, um, that's our that's our plan. Yeah, uh, we hope to at least. How coil be handled? Rising uh, crosshair, rising player view. Uh, Right now, the way it's handled is is through player view. Um, there, there's a rise, uh, there's a return. Um, you know, one of the things that you find when you when you fire a submachine gun, um, but there's also recoil. So there's there's belt recoil, which is the 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 weapon physically rising, and then of course there's accuracy of the weapon. Um, and both of those things can be affected. And accuracy is is um, you know. Or the projectile deviates um, uh, with uh, from the uh, you know uh, laser beam, um, and so both of those things are affected uh, by uh, movement or can be affected by movement and stance. Um, but right now, the way it's handling is um, uh, uh, player view. There there is an accuracy effect, but we're not representing that. Um, we're not representing that with like the rainbow six uh, uh, circles uh, or lines that give you this clear information. That's how we've got it implemented right now. Um, the idea there is to really get a, a handle on, uh, for the player to get a handle on how the weapons handle. So, you know, taking time on the range and in playing the game to figure out that, oh, my spread at uh, 
with my MP5 at 50 yards is X number of inches, and I can learn that at the range. Um, do we need to represent all that that all the time in the game? Um, some people would argue yes. Some people would argue no. Right now, uh, we're going with the no, and and see how the playtest feedback comes back on that. All right. Following TD's major success, will it will a sequel begin immediately? Will it be the same core game, Richard Totsi? When Takedown is a major financial success, I'm going to sell the IP to Activision and move to the Bahamas. Um, and then I'm sure they will, um, you know, really keep true to, to what the what the game's about. Um, no, I'm I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> Um, we're focused on takedown right now. We're focused on, you know, getting a core game. You know, one of the things we're really excited about is at a pro, you know, James is a producer. I'm a designer. Or we've been in all, you know, Mark and uh, all of us have been in development for years and years and years. And at least for me, this is at this early stage from the amount of work that we've put into this title, it's more fun than any game at its core has kind of been at this point. Um, you know, it's 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 more fun than than Ghost Recon 2 was at this point. Um, you know, it's more fun than than um, than Reach was at uh, at four months in, three months in. From I'm talking from beginning of concept, from when you first get a core group of guys and start working on it. Um, you know, of course, a lot of those games were coming off of other titles. Um, but uh, you know, it's it's a really fun game. That's what we're focusing on, and um, we'll we'll see if we're you know there, there there's different levels of success, right? There's there's um, you know meeting the community's expectation. Um, you know, we are focused on a, a smaller um, a smaller um, demographic of of people, um, but we you know have to budget and scope uh, and and make our plans according to that. Um, you know, if um, you know the game really takes off with with SOCOM gamers and goes goes insane, that's that's awesome. Um, but we're not making our plans. You know, I you know go read about Darksiders 2 and where they're at financially right now. Um, I think what's one of the key mistakes that developers, even giant developers, make uh, is you know uh, over budgeting, overspending, um, and just you know. And then and then you get into like uh, oh well we have to broaden our audience to get uh, more people. Um, people are arguing in the, in the, uh, oh, Asmi says, I can't bring my, my guns to the Bahamas. Well, after I sell the IP, I'll just buy my own island down there and I can build my own range on it and everything. Okay. Uh, let me do two more questions and then I'll wrap up. Uh, we're coming up for th 13. I, again, I apologize for the problems. Feel free to tweet away. Um, they are on Twitter right now because they just responded to someone else. Um, what type of grenades do you are you thinking of putting in the game? Uh, right now, we got pretty much the standards. What I would consider the standards: um, uh, frag, uh, flashbang, concussion. Um, uh, um, what did I say? Possibly stinger. Um, each one of those has the the, the flashbang, concussion, and stinger. I'll have different uh, effects um, based on. Uh, uh, different things. Um, no, John, we're not planning on incendiary grenades. Uh, smoke grenades are, are a good possibility. We have to we have to look at the tech on that. Um, CS gas again, another possibility. Um, incendiary, probably not. Um, uh, so, but I can commit to those, and then yeah, smoke and CS, and and also looking at a few other uh, you know things that are out there and what we could do cool with grenades um, uh, will be will be something we're going to be looking at. No WP or thermite. No, 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 no. We're not. Fire is not a focus of ours. Fire is extremely difficult to well, and extremely difficult to do realistically. Um, and uh, I personally are, don't want to realistically render the effect of of Willie Pete on a human being. Not uh, something that motivates me. Um. Well, uh, 
Uh, okay, final question. Mike Jenkins, you get the you can get the uh, the final one. Um, so we can all get into some Daisy, or at least you guys can. I'm still waiting for RMA two. I had some problems uh, downloading or installing Steam on my new laptop. Um, will there be vision affected blurred vision suppression when taking fire? So the question is, uh, will your vision be affected when I assume you're taking suppressive fire? Um, probably not. Um, I don't plan to implement a force suppression system that um, uh, affects your your vision or anything like that in the game. Um, I'm not a huge fan of them. I want you to keep your head down because you know if you stick your head out, um, it's going to get shot off. Um, so if a guy's got a you know an MG36 with a Beta C mag and he's hosing down in that corner, um, don't stick your head out. I don't need to blur your vision to tell you that you should stick your head out, not stick your head out. Um, uh, so for takedown, at least, I'm not a, a big fan of, uh, of those, uh, those mechanics. Um, now, when you get hit, um, there's a very good possibility of at least, you know, things like uh, camera throw, um, uh, aim, aim, aim misalignment, and things like that. Um, I'm also, I'm not a huge fan of the uh, blur your vision the more times you've gotten shot things. Um, uh, I've only been shot minorly, but my vision didn't get all blurry. Um, maybe if I you take a major wound, obviously you know you know um, uh, you know I'm not a fan of the whole blood on the screen and the pulsing red and all that kind of stuff. You know there has to be indications, um, uh, you know, but uh, that's that's pretty much the short answer, uh, long answer to your short question. So yeah, yeah, Ben. I've answered the bloody screen question a lot. I don't, I don't. If if you're wounded enough to have blood on your goggles, you're fucked anyway. So, um, so yeah. Anyway, okay. It's four seventeen. A lot of you guys are gonna go play some Daisy. Um, if you don't have the info, if you got this from Unreal and haven't seen the or from Epic and haven't seen the. Um, Daisy info, you can go to Sereland.com, www.sereland.com. You can go to our, the game website at uh, takedownthegame.com. As always, you can follow us on Twitter at, at Sereland for myself or at takedownthegame for the game. Um, you can support the game and buy merchandise at support.sereland.com. Uh, you can like us on Facebook. We always like that. Um, and all that other fancy media stuff that makes me feel good about our clout score. So, thank you very much for joining us. Um, we will reevaluate vocal to see how um, whether I was doing something to call those freezes or um, whether we should uh, use a different service next time. So, uh, thanks very much. Bye bye. <laughs>